Hello and welcome to the latest edition of It's Not Only Zebedee Who Boings. We're standing by what appears to be an ordinary black country canal, but it's a canal that has a part to play in West Bromwich Albion's history. This was West Bromwich Albion's training ground and one day in January 1964 manager Jimmy Hagen got into his car and it shot straight through the fence onto the canal bank where it careered downwards somersaulting as it did so ending up in the canal. The first man on the scene was West Bromwich Albion man Graham Williams. I was first down. I've come out of training and I'm just going to get in my car and he's got the new Cresta uh, automatic choke yeah, which he didn't know how to control or anything yeah. so he's now got a reverse but he put his foot on the on the accelerator yeah. and it shot over the top he it didn't just it's like, straight over the top and he's rolled over and over he was lucky the car went uh face up like up, upright wheels in it? no it slipped and went wheels in yeah and he was lucky because otherwise he could have come through the windscreen. And all his paperwork was floating on the canal at Spring Road. I've, I've run down <laughs> and he's just getting out and he's lying on the bonnet. He's done his neck in it. He's, he's done his bonnet. So we've got sent for the medical. So he's had to lie there, first of all, because we couldn't get, uh, we couldn't get him up. So we've got a stretcher from, the, from Spring Road. We've gone down and the medical men have come down and said, how are we going to get him? We can't get. We can't carry him up there. So we've decided that we'll all go uh, aside and lift him and carry him above our heads. And he he said, "This is where Mickey's are at." He said, "The trouble with you lads, you're not bloody fit." fit. <laughs> and he shouted out to him. He says, "Tell Alec Jackson and Mickey Fudge to drop her in the reserves <laughs> tomorrow." And Jack. I can remember Alec turning and he said, "Give me a five each, lads. I'll go down and I'll drown him." He said, <laughs> "Alec Jackson." He said, "You're not fit." And we used to run every day, didn't we, for turn 10 Nobody or said a word, you know. They've just gone and just looked at each other. <laughs> Who's going to throw him back in? Yeah, I can Who's going to throw him back in? Jacks. Now it has been known from time to time for stray dogs to get onto the pitch. Now one such incident was in November 1976 and it's well remembered by Albion fans because it helped David Cross score on his debut at the Hawthorns. Now one man who has memories of it for obvious reasons was Kevin Candon, the assistant groundsman at the time. Uh, the dog had got on the pitch earlier. Um, during a warm up, uh, we got the dog off and I got the dog and put it into the groundsman's hut at the back. And the match had kicked off and it was going on. And all of a sudden I felt sorry for this dog, being and crying in, in the hut. So I thought, well, all the gates are locked. I'll just chuck him out and give the dog a good talking to him and told him, don't come back in. Before I had even got back to my seat, he was back in the thing on the pitch. Everton bloke had got the ball. The dog ran up to him and somehow he must have got scared of the dog. David Cross took the ball up and put the ball in the net. The dog actually followed the ball into the back of the net. you take a bit of ribbing? Oh, a lot. And I have done from that day to this. It's, uh, it's like hounded me. Now it's exactly 12 months since a new tram was unveiled on the Midland Metro network. It was named after Cyril Regis and I went along to the unveiling. Facing the crowd, arms aloft, ball squarely in the back of the net. That's how West Midlands football fans remember Cyril Regis. And now that iconic image has been captured on the side of a West Midlands Metro tram, which was unveiled in front of his family and friends. 
I think that image really epitomizes Cyril. You know, that celebration, that arm stretched out, you know, reaching out to love his family. Um, you know, it, for me, it epitomizes his faith um, as well. I just think the image represents Cyril really well. I still can't fathom it all, to be honest with you. Like, he still feels like he's still here, like I'm waiting for his phone call. Do you know I mean? His presence is forever felt. What do you think you could have felt about knowing there was a crumb going to be named? Oh, he'd be chuffed. Oh, he'd be so happy. He would be smiling. He'd be very humble about it, obviously, but just known as a tram going from what going to West Brom in itself, from him being, you know, a humble guy and humble beginnings, it's a it's a big deal. It's not something to take lightly. Gentlemen, you're back to aboard the uh, Cyril Regis MBE tram. How does that feel, Brennan? Well, it's a real um, proud moment, not just for uh, for us, but obviously for his family. And also, it represents all the supporters um, who will be travelling on this tram, seeing Cyril's name, but also that typical pose of Cyril um, after he scored a goal. So it's, uh, his name uh, lives on. Right after the event, the tram went into service, travelling between Birmingham, West Bromwich, and Wolverhampton, all places where the name Cyril Regis is well known. Oh, stunning. <laughs> Quite surreal. In the fierce winter of January 1982, numerous games were called off, so the then excellent local sports paper, the Sports Argus, arranged for the Sports Argus Arctic Cup, and it was played between West Bromwich Albion and Birmingham City in Guernsey. An earlier version had been held in 1979, and the two teams drew 1-1. The 1982 match was played in front of 2,500 spectators and they saw the Blues run out winners by two goals to one. Now 35 years on and the Argus has gone and so it appears as the Cup but at least some of us can remember the role, the Arctic role, that the Argus played in football history. Now to end the programme today, we're returning to Slovakia, where, as regular viewers will know, we recently met up with Igor Balis, the man who scored the vital penalty that more or less assured West Brom would get promotion to the Premiership back in 2002. I asked Igor about that one kick, one moment, which made him a legend. <laughs> Ten moment zmerali tlak, ako keď som išiel kopal, my sme tam kopali penaltu, neviem či po troch mesiacoch alebo nejaký tak a, a bol som určený na to, tak no, hoci čo mi prebiehalo v hlave, že či tu penaltu dám, keď ju nedám, či pôjdem skôr domov alebo nepôjdem domov, takým štýlom, neviem, ak by som to asi povedal. So Igor said that it was like a first penalty after three months they, and he was the one who, who had to take it and he had different kind of emotion in in him so it was really difficult he he, he's, he was thinking like if i miss will i go home earlier or you know because it was a big moment so it was really tough mm -hmm. igor and his family entertained the fans who made up our group when we visited him <laughs> The great atmosphere there was somewhat similar to the scenes in West Brom when the players visited Sandwell Council House after promotion was won. Inside the council house, one of the young fans with Igor's promotion medal was none other than one of Igor's sons. I'd just like to thank Sandwell Council and all the people of Sandwell, uh, all the West Bromwich Albion supporters and all the people in the neighbouring community. Uh, the West Bromwich Albion Football Club is a club for the people. And uh, since I became chairman, 
we've been keen to make sure that the club serves the community and provides attractive live football for the people in the area and for all West Bromwich Albion supporters. And we're thrilled to bits that that football next year is going to be in the Premier League. No doubt many fans have got memorabilia and news cuttings about that famous day in Bradford. I caught up recently with reporter Chris Levkovsky. Um, it's quite strange because at, the, at that point I was still working for the Sports Argus on Saturday games. And um, the, the Sports Argus, the match reports, tended to, you had to more or less have them complete with about 10, 15 minutes of the game left. Um, so when that, when that penalty was awarded, um, the, the euphoria was all mine about having to change everything I'd written and change the context of everything. And during that lull where um, Bob Taylor was getting treatment, I actually wrote two intros. One, effectively, to say it was all albums to lose and two, to say that it had um, it sprung to in Wolves' benefit. Um, and I, the one thing I didn't notice was... Until the goal was scored, I didn't realise how many Albion fans were scattered round. Mm. Now, when the penalty was awarded, I was too busy um, panicking about how, how I was going to change everything I'd written. So, actually, when that goal went in, it was like a, a real moment of reflection. And, um, yeah, it was, it was quite chaotic. Yeah. And the coolest man in the chaos on the pitch, of course, was Mr Ballis himself. Now, this week, he celebrates his 50th birthday and by way of celebration, let's recreate his famous goal. So here we go. The pictures are from TNT News and the commentator, he's huge ones. Here's the stop, McInnes, a long ball forward. A chance here for West Bromwich Albion. Now Super Bob, penalty! Would you believe it? A penalty to West Bromwich Albion. Has there ever been a more important spot kick in the Baggies history? The replay clearly shows it is a penalty. Unbelievable scenes on the bench and in the crowd. They know they've got a pen. we got a pen. we got a pen. <laughs> but just remember this, Albion have missed so many penalties this season. Who's taking it? It's Ballis. Boris Ballis, young Igor's son, is he saying, get it done? Igor looks ice cool. He needs to be. Has he got ice running through his veins? They've missed eight and now this. But he's so relaxed. <laughs> Ballis! Oh, what scenes we've got here. The Albion fans are going barbie. They've every right to go mad. Here's the replay. He took it so well. Straight into the corner. Megson just trying to calm everyone down. Oh, what scenes we've got here, though. The Palace scouts know they're in for a game next week. If Albion win, they'll be in the top flight for the first time since Sky invented football. <laughs> so there we are, Igor Ballis there. So some memories, folks, of uh, Igor. Fantastic memories. Just the fact that we were, we'd waited 16 years to get into Premier League and it come down to last but one game of the season. And, well, we couldn't believe it. So we just wait, you know what I mean? Beat the Wolves as well, or we we're going to beat the Wolves to the, to the Premier League. I heard the story of the, the day he joined, he actually marched from the Motos Hotel to the stadium with his boots in a brown carrier, a brown paper bag. You know, he really was the last of an era before the money came in, before the, the um, Premier League really arrived for West Brom. And, you know, to hear him speak so warmly about people he met, about the fans, about the stadium even about Gary Megson, <laughs> um, was a, a quite a thing. And, you know, um, he will forever be that, that man who, who effectively won promotion for Albion. That's about it for this programme then. So from the Presidential Palace in Slovakia, it's goodbye and thanks for watching. Eagle! 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 Eagle!